Okay, so now we've got the colors on this upper lip adjusted and the levels adjusted. It made a big difference, just levels and color balance. If I wanted something more extreme, I could go to adjustments, hue saturation, and actually push those colors in different directions, right? And the problem with using the hue slider is if you push it all the way to the edges or near the edges, you actually lose um, the differentiation of color, differentiation of the color. But if you keep it, you know, within 20 on either side, you'll still have more or less a full spectrum within it. And it's worth kind of checking and seeing like what side of the zero you like better. I think I like it a little bit on the oranger side. Not much. You can also just lighten it overall or darken it overall, but levels is a better tool for that because it won't it it won't adjust the highlights and the shadows. It lets you take the uh, midtone separately. But then the other tool that's really fun for these characters and these creatures is if you want to make something more colorful, you can use hue saturation just to intensify the color. So if that yellow in that lip wasn't intense enough, I could push it, right? Or if I wanted this all to be a little bit more muted, I could take the saturation down. I think I, I will take it down a little bit, maybe like 10 points. So those are our three direct adjustments that we'll be using a lot. And I use them in these orders, levels, color balance, and then hue saturation. Now I'm ready to cut this out. I'm gonna go ahead and use my handy dandy quick selection tool with a larger brush because this looks like a much easier selection than those spikes. And it's gonna paint around the top. I can zoom in. And actually, yeah, I like all of that. Good. And see, and then I can get this little bit here on the gray background. And I might need to do that by hand because I want a little bit of that cap. So sometimes those little subtleties, like just the edge of that mushroom cap coming through are worth uh, not using the easiest selection tool. Because the easier it is, the more prone to mistakes. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about the bottom yet because I have a bottom jaw that I have to figure out, you know, where the things come and go in there. I like the little bit of moisture that's already in the bottom of that mouth. But I do wanna worry about this stuff, like how do I put this and merge it with this lip? So first of all, let me play with these colors. And what I'm gonna do is actually move the lip underneath it and then play with my direct adjustments, levels. I'm gonna brighten up the midtones. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. You just can't get enough practice working with layers. Brighten up the midtones. Limit the highlights. So I don't want bright white. Maybe even darken the shadows a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to go to color balance because there's a lot of yellow in this I don't want in the midtones. Takes it right out. Maybe give it a little bit more of a bluish hue. And then in the shadows, I want to make the shadows bluer. Well, I don't know. Let's see how that works. And the highlights will just warm up a little. All right. So now this is interesting. I always want hard edges, but now I'm kind of blending this 
into this. And this is the thing that really gives my head its shape and direction. So I don't want to erase from this layer. Instead, I'm going to put it underneath. And I want to erase at 100% opacity from this layer. Whoops. From this layer. <laughs> And so this is where I'm going to return to that soft eraser that we used for the landscape. But at 100% opacity. And get a sense for, you know, where, where should I seam these together in a way that's believable. So now I can go in and see, okay, so I'm going to make this work at the bottom with this kind of shadow. But I want to cut out the tops cleanly. So I'm going to go to my quick selection tool. Make quick work of these. And then do some of the, the cleanup by hand. All right, and then now I have to decide how much of it do I want. I think I don't want this so much, so I'm going to take my eraser and erase it away from here. Or better yet, do a rough cut with lots of overlap, right, of all this stuff, and then duplicate that onto its own layer, or even just um, command exit. So command X will delete it, but then it will copy it onto a, the clipboard so I can put it onto a new layer. And then I move that layer behind everything. If I turn off auto select, then I can move it so it's on the other side of the head around the other eye on the other side, like that. And that shows me new things. So that's a little bit of internal compositing. And even the slight softness of focus helps for that because this eye is the furthest thing away from the viewer on the head. So I'll keep that there for now. Yeah, so far so good. Okay, now... The bottom of the jaw, most of that has to do with how much do I reveal on this top jaw, and I'm going to get rid of this bottom cap of the mushroom. Hopefully it will feel like the back of a throat. And I'm going to leave that because that might transition into a tongue. And then I'm going to take that bottom piece. And before I play with its direct adjustments, I'm going to stretch it, let it overlap a little bit more, and move up. Because I want to use it, if possible, as a bit of a jawline. Like so. Okay, now I can go to the direct adjustments. Start with levels. Actually, I think its levels are pretty good. I'm darkening it a little because it will be in the shadow. I'm going to limit its highlights. And mostly it's going to be in the color balance. Take out a lot of that yellow. And a lot of that red. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to tweak it a little bit more. Just to make sure I have overlap with the upper jaw. So now I'm just going to delete out what I need to delete out using the quick selection tool. I'll do it by section by section here. Yeah, that can work. Command D to deselect and then use my lasso to clean it up. Okay, so we're almost done with all the head parts. That already has five things composited together. But it's good to use a few extra composites on the head so it's really your own design instead of just a lion's head on a horse's body or something like that. Because the head is the focal point of the creature, right? And if your head is unique, that's going to make it a lot easier uh, to see it as a, a unique fantasy vision. Okay, but my head's missing something. And so now uh, we can think of the lighting, and I have a, a especially easy area that needs some work, is the inside of my mouth shouldn't have light at the back of it, right? So now we're going to do the, the tool adjustments. So the adjustment tools, instead of doing the whole layer and using levels, I can use dodge and burn. I'm going to use burn less at an exposure of less than 20 doing the midtones to burn the back of that mouth to something darker right also the edge of the jaw there and then i can also burn the highlights a little bit just hit them a few times where i think the catching of the lights seems a little too extreme and as it darkens it will also take away saturation so if i feel i need some of that saturation back I can use the sponge tool and just hit it a little bit where light's still hitting. And then I'm also going to take the lip, there it is, and dodge that, brighten it, it's the opposite of, of burn, along the edge. So it feels like it's catching more light. especially over here. And you can see as it brightened it, it's actually bringing that saturation back into it. And I could use the sponge tool to desaturate as well as to saturate wherever I hit. Okay, then I can use dodge and burn on all those different layers to help seam them together. Remember, they're very strong. but this can be used to help the lighting. Especially where things come together. You know, things cast shadows on creatures all the time. And we want to start designing it for ourselves. Okay, now I need the eye on the other side. If you remember my sketch, I have the frill on the eye here, and I'm using this kind of pine coney mushroom, spiky mushroom. I need that on the other side too. So this is where a little bit of internal compositing really works well. I'm simply going to duplicate that because there is a lot of symmetry in the creature world. The eyes are similar side to side. And I'm going to flip that duplicate. So I command J to duplicate it. I'm going to flip it horizontally. So that tilts it the other way, reverses the lighting. I'm going to move it to that side. And then I'm going to use command left bracket to move it down through the layers. Like so. Now I, I do want to be mindful that it's not too copy pasty. So then I want to transform it. That's my own scientific term, copy pasty. 